Welcome back to the sweatshop boys and girls. In today's video, I'm going to be showing you how to do rear brakes on this 2011 Honda CRV. What we've chosen for brakes is a pair of coated rotors for the rear. That way we won't have them rust up when we breathe on them. We've also chosen some premium Bosch pads to put on this thing so we don't run into any problems with squealing or premature wear on the pad material. Obviously you don't have to go with this sort of stuff because it is more expensive. You can get cheaper stuff but you'll end up replacing it in half the time. That being said, if you are going to attempt this at home, make sure you use a jack with a pair of jack stands to get the back up safely. And and don't crawl around underneath the thing until it is actually secured. First step, put this thing up in the air and fire those tires off. Of course, before we get started with today's video, do me a big favor and hit that subscribe button. Don't forget to hit the notification bell so you never miss one of my new upcoming videos. Now, in case you're wondering why it is we're replacing the brakes, it's because we have an excessive amount of rust on the rotor. As you can tell, these are coated rotors. They're quite old though. These rotors are approximately four years old. And in that time, because of the pandemic that we all went through, yay, the rotors developed quite a bit of rust because the vehicle sat for quite a while. Of course, with that rust, not all of it came off of the vehicle. You can see here in this section, there is quite a bit of rust on the actual rotor. Watch what happens when we try to rotate the actual wheel. It gets quite stiff over there and takes a lot of energy to push it through. You can also see that the rest of the rotor itself is in quite terrible shape. So that's primarily why we're going to be replacing these things today. This also translates to quite a bumping on the actual pedal. So when the customer is applying the brake, it is forcing her foot back quite a bit anytime she applies the brake. Most times it's more of an annoyance than anything else, but it can be dangerous in a situation where you need your full braking capacity in order to avoid avoid the bumper of somebody else's vehicle. That being said, let's go ahead and fire the wheels off and we'll get this crap swapped out. Remember boys and girls, if your vehicle has a wheel lock, make sure this thing is securely put on before you go ahead and fire it off. Of course, if you spray your hub with white lithium grease or anti-seize, you'll always be able to get your wheels off without trying to smash the thing off the vehicle. Next step, boys and girls, get a number three Phillips bit and hammer these two Phillips screws out. Our next step is gonna be to get a 12 millimeter socket and ratchet combination and twist these two guys off here so we can get the caliper off. With your bolts out of the way, take a flat screwdriver and gently pry off the caliper. Supposed to make this look easy. God damn it. With the caliper finally out of the way, you can go ahead and pull your pads off. As you can see there, we still have a little bit of pad life left, but not enough to warrant keeping these things around. Oh, come on. You know what? Seems like that guy just doesn't want to leave the car, so we'll leave it be for a little bit. Of course, do the same on the other side. With this guy here, you have these tabs that are holding it into the piston. What you need to do is grab a nice firm grip of it and yank it out of the caliper. Of course, be careful because there's lots of sharp edges ready to cut you. Now take your caliper and just move it out of the way. When moving your caliper out of the way, make sure you don't put any stress on your brake holes. What I like to do is just rest it on this upper control arm here. It's a nice cozy place for the caliper. Now the next thing we're going to do is get a 17 mil and hammer these guys out. Get a half inch impact gun and a 17 mil flex. Ah, my fucking hand. Oh. Yeah, boys and girls, those are the pleasures of a flex socket. They love to break your fingers. So be very careful when employing the use of these stupid things. They are wonderful inventions, but they will hurt your fingers if you have them in close proximity to this end. With that out of the way, we can now go ahead and remove our rotor. One other thing I'll tell you before we pull that rotor off, there are these little metal washers here. These ones are currently seized into place. It may be hard to see on camera, but this guy here and this guy here, you don't want to lose. If you do lose one of them, make sure you remove the other one or replace both of them. But 
do not bolt your caliper bracket down with one on, so be aware of that. Now, when removing your rotor, sometimes you'll have a ridge on the back of the rotor which will cause it to be stuck. I hope to God that that is not the case for me, but if it is the case for you at home, what you're going to need to do is remove this rubber seal here so you can access the adjuster inside for the handbrake. Let's give this a shot. <coughs> Luckily, we didn't have to remove anything, but this is the adjuster that I'm talking about right here. Of course, make sure before you discard this thing, remove the seal so you can put it on your new rotor. Now, if you've done your brakes in the past or you've had someone who has done your brakes in the past, hopefully your hub looks like this. The reason why this hub looks like this is because I'm the one who did the brakes four years ago and I doused it in anti seize so that it wouldn't rot. There is barely anything for us here to clean up. So I'm not gonna show you me cleaning this up because there's nothing really to do. We literally have to just wipe off some of the anti seize and then apply new anti seize and we're good to go. There's no rust or anything on the hub it's actually in perfect condition you can also see that the rest of this vehicle is in fairly decent condition there's minimal rust on it and of course it is a full-time rust belt vehicle this thing has spent its whole life in the rust belt so that goes to show you boys and girls if you take care of your stuff it makes your life easier later on when you go to service stuff that's the result you should end up with if you are anti-seizing your hub, boys and girls. Make sure you thoroughly check out the hub when applying the anti-seize to make sure that you don't end up with any bristles from your anti-seize brush on the hub. Of course, that can potentially cause a wobble from your rotor, which will give you a headache at the brake pedal. That being said, you can now grab your rotor and put it into place. Slip it on and then rotate the rotor to this section here where you can access your adjustment for your handbrake. Then go ahead and grab your two Phillips screws and secure your rotor to the hub. Don't forget to apply some anti-seize to your screw. Oh, it's a terrible angle. Remember, do not be aggressive with these screws. You need very little torque in order to secure the rotor to the hub. If you're going to torque them with a torque wrench, I would not exceed eight or nine foot pounds of torque. What you're gonna do is grab a flat screwdriver and now tighten up the adjustment until you can't move the rotor anymore. Periodically try to move it to see whether you have come into contact with the shoe. There we go, we can't move it anymore. And now back it off one or two turns until you can move it and you should be good to go in terms of the adjustment. Now, boys and girls, our favorite time has come where we need to service the bracket. Essentially, we need to take this thing here and turn it into this with a nice coat of zinc primer and no rust on it. Look at that, boys and girls. From the last time I did this job, you can still see the machine marks. See what happens when you do it the right way? Less headache down the road. Now, in order to service this thing, what you're going to need to do is get yourself a pocket-sized flat screwdriver. You're going to need to stick it in between the caliper bracket and the shim. Pry it off like so. Of course, as you know now, at this juncture in the video, I have serviced these brakes before. So, you're going to take a square edge file or a file with a 90 degree cut and just file away the brunt of the crap. Now you can see that I have serviced them before because that is some of the zinc primer that I have sprayed on this previously. As you can see, after about four, four and a half years, it's held up quite well. The pads themselves weren't seized in place. Of course, there is a bit of rust, which is expected, but it really does make a difference. So hopefully if you've seen my advice to spray your caliper after grinding off the rust with some zinc primer or paint, you heed the warning and see the effects and see that it actually does make sense to put in that extra little bit of effort so that you don't have to grind off all sorts of rust. Now, instead of me spending 10 to 15 minutes per side trying to get rid of all the rust and corrosion on this caliper bracket, it'll be half of that time, if not less. After filing down some of that scale on the caliper bracket, what you can do is use a flat disc like this to get off whatever scale you can't get off easily with the file, and then a wire wheel like this to get off the rest of the crap, as well as the old zinc primer, and prep it to receive the new primer. Of course, make sure you wear a mask. This stuff is no fun for your nose or your lungs.
there you have it boys and girls that there was about two or three minutes of grinding and for you guys at home it'll probably be half that time because i don't want to bore you of course you can see the result here there is minimal amounts of rust and the grinder was doing more work to get off the old primer now to prove to you that it is worthwhile for you to do this you can still see there the machine marks from the factory you can see the lines there which indicate that there is barely any surface material that is gone of course you can see the pitting and whatnot but of course that's expected here in the rust belt do the other side and then i'll show you how to lubricate the guide pins once you've cleaned up both sides you can now go ahead and pull your guide pins out what you want to do is wiggle them first to make sure that they are free after twisting them what you're going to do is just pull back on the rubber boot like so make sure you don't pull it to the point where you rip it because that will cause you to cry especially in my situation because it is a sunday and there are no parts stores open at this hour or on sunday and then wiggle the actual guide pin out of position if you have serviced it in the way or manner that i have serviced my brakes from my past videos you should have a slider that comes out relatively easy now that's not always the case but in most cases it's nice and lubricated like this and doesn't give you a headache what you want to do is just clean off all the excess grease and make way for new grease make sure that there is no rust as you can see there in the rust belt majority of the time you will have a little bit of rust around the collar here of the guide pin where your boot sits and locks into place so grind that down get rid of all the rust there you can use the wire wheel if it's not too excessive and if it is either replace it or sandblast it of course do the same to the other side the tighter the seal the better wipe it down now, on most vehicles or guide pins, there will be a difference between the two. Usually, there is a rubber portion to one of the guide pins. Don't mix them up because that can cause a clunking sound or an annoyance for you down the road. Set your guide pins aside and then take your rag and just clean out whatever excess grease or debris may be in the boot section here. Try your best not to get any of that debris into the boot. If you do, you can use brake clean and a lot of time and patience to remove the debris you can also pull the boots out if they don't come out because usually you'll get a rust ridge around here on either side and then you can service the rest of the caliper in this case for us it's not needed because i've done that in the past and there is no real rust there hindering the slider from functioning the way it should now with the guide pin when you're going to service this area here be sure only to grind where there is rust you don't want to take off the coating the zinc coating that is on this thing because because it'll cause it to rust a lot quicker than it actually has to so just do wherever there is rust and then you can apply grease to the area to keep it from rusting essentially that is the result that you want to end up with around the circumference of the guide pin so continue that process make sure you wear a mask because the rust particles will love to creep into your lungs and then we'll see you back you should end up with a result like this without any rust on this ceiling or mating surface with the rubber what you want to do now is take a generous helping of brake lubricant and spread it in this area of the boot of course you don't want to gob it on to the point where you can't get the slider in you don't want it to be too little so that moisture can creep in and help this thing rot prematurely what i like to do with my brush is just work it back and forth like that that way you know you're getting good coverage then of course what you want to do is grease up the rest of the shaft nice and generously so that you don't have your grease disappear on you halfway through the service life of your brakes then just slide it into the hole nice and easily. If you push it too fast, you don't give the grease a chance to kind of move around in there and then you'll get a lot of compressed air which will push your slider out like this and that just causes a headache for you. Then push it in all the way and pull up on the actual rubber to release any air that is held in by that seal you've just created with all that new grease. Of course, repeat the process on the other side and then we'll spray down the caliper bracket with some nice zinc primer and put it back on the vehicle. With your nice new lubricated caliper, what you're gonna do now is take some zinc well through primer and apply it to this section here. Now you can go ahead and coat the whole caliper, but it's not needed. That's just a cosmetic thing. The only portion that you need to for functionality is 
this guy here. Of course, boys and girls, you should know by now, for proper application, shake well. Yeah, definitely better with the right hand. Now, of course, the nice thing with zinc well through primer is it dries relatively quickly. We'll give this guy about 10 minutes here to set up, and then we will go ahead and put our shims on, grease it, and put it back on the car. You can see all that dust floating around, boys and girls. That is the zinc waiting to make its way into your lungs. So I should have told you to wear a mask, and I should have wore one myself. But hey, you know, not the brightest of people sometimes. While the other side sets up, what I'm going to do is show you on this side that is all ready and waiting for its new shims how to put them in. What you want to do is take your new shim and make sure that it actually fits with some amount of friction. A lot of times and a lot of common mistakes that a technician will make is that they force this thing in bending these little ears out of place which will allow this guy to float around until it rusts into place and you'll get these annoying little squeaking and squealing sounds that'll drive you and the customer crazy. So take the extra time to make sure that this thing sits nice and snug in its place. Now sometimes if your caliper bracket is overly rotted what you can do is apply a little bit of silicone to the back of this shim here so that it will kind of glue itself to the caliper bracket. What we're trying to do now here is force it in without it bending out of shape. So what we're going to do is basically grab this end here and force it up into place with your index finger. You should end up with a result like this. As you can see there though, there is a little bit of separation here. So your second step is going to be to take a flat screwdriver and push this portion here up into the caliper bracket. Take your screwdriver and just push it like so on either side. You should end up with a result like this where that little portion of the clip is sitting relatively flat with this portion of the bracket. That will also take care of the gap between your shim and the caliper bracket. And that boys and girls is how you properly install a brake shim. Make sure of course gently that it's not going to fall out because if it is then you'll need to bend these tabs in order to ensure that it is secure to your brake caliper. Of course, we need to get our grease that functions really well, but stinks disgustingly. This thing is, it's, it's nasty, man. It has such a high gross chemical smell. Yeah, unfortunately, I don't have any other Bendix cans left over. So clean full it is for now until we finish this can and then we'll be trying something else. We'll probably try the Bosch stuff because it's green and... I don't know. I've had blue and purple, so why not go green, right? What you want to do is put a nice healthy dose of grease on the shim so that your pad can slide nice and easily. Now, make sure you don't gob it onto the point where you have grease in this section here and it won't make its way onto your rotor. And that, boys and girls, is a caliper that is ready to go back into service. Of course, as long as you do the other side. So make sure you install all the other shims and complete the rest of the service work on your caliper bracket. Now, boys and girls, the time has come for us to service our caliper. What we're going to do is grind away some of the rust here on the piston with a grinding disc like this. Make sure when you do do this that you do not hit the rubber seal here because if you damage it, it will lead to tears later on. Grab your caliper and just... Grind away. Don't be overly aggressive. Make sure you're gentle with this process. You're not looking to take away material. You're just looking to take away some of the surface rust. That should do the trick. Now what I like to do before retracting the piston is take my silicone and apply a light thin layer where it's going to meet with the pad backing. It just has to be a very little bit. What it does is it helps with vibrations and condensation and will generally keep your car a bit quieter in the rear. Of course, take your index finger and just smear the silicone around the piston. Make sure you get nice, even coverage. Then, boys and girls, you can go ahead and retract the piston with a vice grip. Because there is no handbrake assembly or equipment on this caliper or related to this rear caliper, we don't have to twist it or any fancy things like that. We can just take a vice grip like this and gently push back on the caliper piston. What you want to do is make sure that your master cylinder cap is off so that you don't have any pressure buildup when you force the piston back. And then just gently push the piston back into place. 
Whatever you do, do not put too much pressure. If you send the piston into the bore cocked, you can damage the seal that is on your piston, which will create a headache for you later down the road. Also, be very careful. Do not hit the rubber seal that protects your piston. You don't want to rupture it because if you do, that will cause condensation, which leads to rust, which leads to issues that tissues just won't solve. Don't forget to put a light layer of silicone on this air and this air where your outer pad is going to touch. And then we can throw our caliper bracket on. Take your caliper bracket. Make sure that you inspect to see whether those two shims are there for your caliper bracket. Slide it into place. Be sure not to knock off those shims. And then thread in your caliper bracket bolts by hand. Try your best not to get any grease on your brand new rotor. It's just never a good practice. And thread them up all the way by hand. Of course, boys and girls, I shouldn't have to say this, but if you've watched my videos in the past, make sure you anti-seize those bolts. Don't put them in dry. Nobody likes that. Lubrication is the key to success, my friends. Grab your torque wrench and set it to 80 foot-pounds or 108 newton meters. Also, before you start to torque, make sure you turn on your torque wrench if it's electronic like mine. Don't do what Jimmy does sometimes. It's, yeah, just don't do what I do sometimes, unless I'm doing the right thing. Okay, take your outer pad, place it on the outside portion of your caliper bracket. Take your inside pad and what's left of your gloves and whatever strength you may have in your hands and try to force this thing into the piston. Remember, boys and girls, if you start to see red or feel like you're about to pass out, take a break and try again. Once you get the three tabs in, push with all your strength using your core lower back. Ugh. Oh, fucking son of a... Ugh. Why are you stuck? Okay, you know what? Something wrong there. Pull this bitch back out. I'm supposed to make this look easy. As you can see, boys and girls, it's not always sunshine and rainbows over here in the sweatshop. Let's attempt that again. Okay, line up your top tab, then push your two bottom tabs in, and then push. And there we go. You should end up with a result like that, where your pad sits flat against the piston. Now take this contraption, put it back into place, ensure that your brake holes is not stressed in any way and it is in its natural position. Then you can go ahead, take your anti-seize caliper bolts and thread them in by hand. Well, that one's a little bit of a pain in the ass. If one of your bolts is being a little bit of a pain in the ass, what you can do is loosen up the top bolt or remove it all together, catch the one that is a pain in the ass, and then attempt with the other side. Get your torque wrench, set it to 17 foot-pounds or 23 newton meters, and then torque these guys down. <laughs> all right, boys and girls, we are good to go. Of course, your next step, which I forgot to hit record when I started doing it, is to put some anti-seize or white lithium grease in this region here so that your wheel comes off the next time when you try to get it off. Again, don't forget to inspect to make sure that you don't have any bristles from your brush between the wheel and the rotor. That way you don't have the potential for a wheel to shake all over the place and give you a headache. Spread it out nice and evenly, boys and girls, and then you can go ahead and throw your wheel on. Should have been abstract artist. Look at that. It's a work of art, isn't it? You can't even tell whether that was done by a professional or a kindergarten class. Of course, grab your wheel, slap it on the car. Then take your bolts and thread them in by hand. Good job, Jimmy. Now take a small ugga dugga gun that doesn't produce much torque and fire all these bolts home. Don't forget to make sure that your wheel lock is sitting properly on the lock socket. Go ahead and torque your wheels now to 80 foot-pounds or 108 newton meters. And if you've taken off the cap on your master cylinder, go ahead and fasten it back on. Okay, boys and girls, we are pretty much done. The last thing I will tell you is make sure before you put this thing into gear, pump 
the brakes. Pump the brakes either with the car on or off. It doesn't matter. Just make sure that the pedal gets hard and that it feels like it's engaging. Do not drive the car without pumping the brakes. Otherwise, your bumper will be bound to kiss something you don't want it to kiss. That's all she wrote for the Honda. All you got to do now is make sure you take this thing for a test drive. Ensure that you've remedied all the issues that tissues just wouldn't solve and send the customer on their way. Well, boys and girls, I hope you found the video entertaining as well as informative. Of course, if you did, please like, share, and subscribe. Don't forget to hit the notification bell so you never miss one of my new videos. And as always, thank you for watching. We will see you in the next one. These, as you can, they're about four years old, I think. Now they are quite a bit older than that, but fuck was I saying? Watch what happens when we try to run this portion of the rotor through the two pads. Oh, that's too much fucking rambling. That being said, let's go ahead and fire off these old... Uh, always be able to get your wheels off without trying to bash it off with a hammer. With the bolts out of the way, take a flat screwdriver and then pry the caliper forward. Ah, fuck you. What you're going to need to do is remove this tab. Tab. What you're going to need to do is remove this rubber... The fuck is that called? <sighs> Luckily, we didn't have to remove crap. That sounds stupid. Now go ahead, grab your new rotor, slip it on and into place. Oh, I'm supposed to make this look easy, boy. Ugh. Next step, boys and girls, grab your new rotor and put it on. Oh, wait, I forgot to say about the fucking anti seize. That'll potentially cause you a fucking headache. Ah, oh, fuck this whole clip. Don't forget to. to well, don't fucking hit the camera. Now to prove to you that it actually is worth your time, you can still see there clearly the machine marks from the factory if the camera would focus, you fuck. Of course, that's expected here in the rust belt. Built? Wiggle them. This just sounds fucking weird. Wiggle them. I don't know what the fuck I'm saying. You know what? Let me just start this whole fucking thing over again because this is all bullshit. In the recommended way that I have recommended in my past. You don't want it to be so little to where the... Oh, fuck. The functional... You should end up with a... Of course, now we need to get our grease, our wonderfully smelling... Oh, fuck. I left it over there. Some... Oh, no. It's right here. Just so you can grind away the surface rust. I just said that. Fuck. Ah, uh, fuck. Yeah, fuck. I don't know what I'm saying. Your wheel combination back onto the vehicle. Wheel combination? It sounds like a fucking school. That way, you don't have the potential for a whip. <laughs> what? Don't forget to make sure that your wheel lock sits flush and... What? Don't forget... Ah, you fucking cocksucker. Ah, fuck. I don't know what I'm saying. And of course, if you've taken your brake holes, or uh, what? What? And if you've taken off your master cylinder brake cap, what the fuck? <laughs> of course, if you liked the video, don't forget to hit that subscribe button. Oh man, I don't even know my fucking ending again. Son of a bitch, I forgot it. Of course, I hope you found the end of fucking blah, blah, blah. I don't know what the hell I'm saying. Well, boys and girls, I hope you found the video entertaining and informative. Of course, if you did, 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 what the fuck? <laughs>